Jacob, what is your main message at iSeen? Love. It is. The reality is that everything is inclusive, not exclusive. Everything is inclusive. And the message isn't a verbal message. Uh, Gandhi had once done a, a presentation in a big city in India, and as he was leaving town and he was on the train and thousands of people were waving at him, a newspaper man was running along the train saying, Mr. Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi, what's your message for the people? And he said, my life is my message. That's what my life is about. My life is my message. The words, uh, the words can't actually describe the essentialness of the life experience any more than the menu can accurately describe the food. So I believe that the most potent effect that we can have is if we are graced by the humility that accompanies just discovering something about the essential nature of life and the simplicity of it and if you have a moment of unconditional acceptance which occurred for me about eight or nine years ago um, everything appears different even though it looks the same so for me what I am uh, attempting to, to bring Aside from things that I've learned uh, as an optometrist, a vision scientist, person working with vision and light and consciousness, I think the most potent thing that I can bring is if I am able to walk my talk and talk my walk at the same time, then hopefully I'll be able to touch some people, even though I won't know it, but something will happen. Yes, and to tell us a bit about your work with the eyes and light. Well, I had a profound experience 34 years ago. I was a practicing optometrist. I went into a, a state of meditation. I'd been wearing glasses for nine years. Couldn't see without my glasses. I went into a state of meditation and had what today would be called an out-of-body experience, although I'd never heard of that term. And during that experience, even though my eyes were closed, I could see everything in the room with total clarity, as if I was looking at it with my eyes open. That was rather profound for me, but what was more profound is I then realized that I couldn't tell from where I was seeing. That it felt as I was observing everything from everywhere at the same time. Now, I don't know what the name would be for that, but it was a very moving experience. And at whatever point uh, I opened my eyes again, my eyesight was clear. I mean, not only my eyesight, <clears throat> but everything was clear. Uh, what I mean is there were no questions. Everything was just obvious on some level. And so I drove myself to my office with my eyeglasses next to the seat because my license said I had to wear glasses to drive. And I certain, certainly couldn't see the eye charts and so on at my office. And as I'm driving, I realize I could read everything. I can read the license plates, the billboards, the street signs. And I get to my office <clears throat> and I start putting up a whole series of eye charts that I've never seen before. And I'm able to read all of them with perfect clarity. So even though I was led to believe that it's impossible that your eyesight and vision could improve, the fact was so obvious to me that something had happened that I said, oh my God, my prescription has disappeared. And so I put myself behind my instrument and started asking myself the same questions I'd asked thousands of patients. Which is better, one or two? You know, trying to figure out what my prescription was and expecting that when I went through this process, because I was examining myself, I couldn't tell what the lenses were in the device, that when I came out of it, the device would basically say zero, or what we call Plano, no prescription. 
I go through the process until I get to the best lens power for each eye. I come from behind the instrument, I look at the instrument, and I'm totally shocked that what's in the device is the exact prescription that's in my eyeglasses. I scratch my head and I say, how is it possible that I'm seeing 300% better without squinting or straining, but the optical measurements of my eyes haven't changed at all? And the only thing that came to me is, oh, we don't see from the eyes. And so the journey after that was really uncovering what is the source of our seeing? What is it that is seeing? And since that time, I have gradually identified more and more with whatever that pair of eyes is, rather than the physical seeing mechanism. And so it, it opened up a whole world uh, Jonathan Swift said it very beautifully, he said, real vision is the ability to see the invisible. All of a sudden, an invisible world became evident to me, and that really shifted things for me. And to tell you how profound the experience was, that was 34 years ago. I'm going to be 63 this November. I have never had a pair of glasses on my face since. How? How do you recommend that people open to these kinds of eyes they have within themselves? Well, they follow the guidance of their compass. Each of us has a compass that's in some way synchronized with the universe's compass. And it guides each of us on a subtly different journey. Um, because each of us are like different kinds of trees. We each bring a different gift. We're all part of the same species, but we each have a very different perception, a very different awareness, a very different job that we are here to do. So there's no recipe that everyone can, can do to find something. Um, it's grace. For me, it's just grace. You just follow that which is animating all of life. And if you are fortunate, all of a sudden at a moment when you're not looking, something becomes clear. And that's just the journey that I have found. I have never found a technique that gave me the way to get here. Techniques are a very good place to begin. Uh, I always say it's good to have stepping stones, just don't take the stones with you. The difficulty with techniques is you get addicted to the technique. And I've always said there's no way to get to a state of no mind by the way of the mind. It's a quantum leap. It happens when we're not looking. So I don't know a way, but each of us has a guiding force. Each of us is guided and animated in a certain way. And we have to learn to look less and see more. Because we're so focused on looking for life that we don't realize that life is actually looking for us. When we look for one thing, we often miss everything we're not looking for. So. For me, it's about learning to see, just as all of us were taught how to speak, very few of us were taught how to listen. We were taught how to look, we weren't taught how to see. As we begin to experience seeing, which is a receptive process, rather than a process of actually doing something, then we begin to notice that life is sending us signals continually. And these signals, are like a GPS system that is guiding us precisely through the steps of our life. The steps that will take us to the pot of gold that you're talking about. That, that place where we finally say, ah, thank God I'm home. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, no, I think I've shared everything that wants to be shared. Thank you. You're welcome.